In the Lord of the Rings, the Free Peoples have only one feasible option to defeat Sauron. They must destroy the One Ring. Despite the low odds of success, the plan works. The One Ring plummets into Mount Doom, destroying Sauron and undoing all of his works. But why exactly did this happen? Why did the destruction of the One Ring kill Sauron? Okay, first a little explaining just so I don't get a bunch of comments about this. When I use the words destroy or kill, I'm using it to refer to Sauron's physical form. Death in Tolkien's Legendarium refers to the separation of the body and the spirit, but the spirit itself cannot be destroyed. So at the end of The Lord of the Rings, Sauron is killed because his body is destroyed, but his spirit does still exist, he's just so weakened that he will never be a problem again. Alright, so what has happened that means that when the One Ring is destroyed, Sauron follows along with it? First, one needs to understand what Sauron is and how his power actually works. Sauron is one of the Ainur, a Maya to be specific, an order of angelic beings one step below the gods. He has a lot of native power, seemingly far more than his fellows such as Saruman and Gandalf. But there's a catch to this power, for both Sauron and the other Ainur. It's not infinite. When an Ainu invests their power into something, they're not getting it back. The most well-known example is Morgoth, who invests most of his power into Arda itself, permanently maiming it. However, by the end of the First Age, physically, he is merely a shadow of his former self as much of his power is expended into the earth itself. Another example is that when the two trees are destroyed, the Vala Yavanna admits that she does not have the power to recreate them unless she has access to the light of the Silmarils. When it comes to Sauron, he benefited from Morgoth's own investment of power into Arda, so he did not have to do anything like that, but he still had investments of his own, his creations such as Barad-dûr and the Black Gate, and of course, the One Ring. The One Ring contained a significant amount of Sauron's native power, its purpose was to enhance the wearer's power, and in Sauron's hands, it was supposed to be used to dominate the minds of the bearers of the other rings of power. However, there is another way for one of the Ainur to lose their power. Death. The Ainur do not need to wear a physical form, but they do need to wear one should they wish to interact with the physical world. And while an Ainu wears a physical form, they can in fact be killed. And if an Ainu was killed, the separation of their body and their spirit, they can lose a significant part and perhaps even all of their native power. This happens to Saruman, who is reduced to an impotent spirit after death, and it also happens to Gandalf, but he is re-embodied and re-empowered by Iluvatar. Sauron dies not once, not twice, but on three separate occasions, and each time sees a reduction of his native power. After his first death during the destruction of Numenor, Sauron can no longer take a fair form and is stuck in the form of a Dark Lord, terrible to look upon. After his second death at the hands of Elendil and Gilgalad, Sauron is so weakened that his spirit cannot bear away the One Ring like it did at the downfall of Numenor and he takes over a thousand years to regenerate a new body. And yes, he does have a body by the way. Gollum has seen it and notes that he only has four fingers on one of his hands. He is not a giant flaming eye. And when the One Ring is destroyed, Sauron suffers his third death, effectively ending him as a threat. But that's just the thing. Whereas one death finished Saruman and would have finished Gandalf if not for divine intervention, Sauron was able to take two deaths before his third and final death. And this is where the One Ring comes into play. It contains a significant portion of Sauron's power, but it also exists separately of Sauron. So even should Sauron be killed, the power dwelling in the One Ring would still exist, meaning that it's plausible that while it existed, Sauron could keep coming back. In that sense, the One Ring acted as something of a phylactery for Sauron, although it should be said that that was never its intended purpose. Sauron obviously never intended on being separated from the One Ring. So while it's possible that without the existence of the One Ring, Sauron may have recovered from his first death at Numenor, he almost certainly would not have recovered from his second death. Thus, when the One Ring was destroyed, Sauron's remaining native power was not enough to sustain his works. Structures such as Barad-dûr and the Black Gate, but also the physical body he had created for himself in the Third Age, a physical body that would not have existed without the continued existence of the One Ring. In other words, 
The One Ring was something of a life support machine for Sauron, albeit an extremely powerful one, and without it, he could no longer survive. But the One Ring's destruction was not what concerned Sauron. In fact, as I've stated in another one of my videos, why didn't Sauron guard Mount Doom, the thought never even crossed his mind. Sauron's chief concern was the One Ring being used against him, and there is good reason for this. Although someone like Aragorn, who Sauron assumed carried the One Ring, could never have the strength to master it, people like Elrond, Galadriel and Gandalf, and likely several others, possibly did. And in Letter 246, Tolkien explains what might happen if Gandalf was able to permanently wrest control of the One Ring from Sauron following a confrontation. Confrontation of Sauron alone and unaided, self to self, was not contemplated. One can imagine the scene in which Gandalf, say, was placed in such a position. It would be a delicate balance. On one side, the true allegiance of the Ring to Sauron. On the other, the superior strength because Sauron was not actually in possession, and perhaps also because he was weakened by long corruption and expenditure of will in dominating inferiors. If Gandalf proved the victor, the result would have been for Sauron the same as the destruction of the Ring. For him, it would have been destroyed, taken from him forever. But the Ring and all of its works would have endured. It would have been the master in the end. In this scenario, the outcome is the same for Sauron. His power within the One Ring is completely separated from him, which would thus likely result in his destruction, the same as if the One Ring was destroyed. However, the evil power within the One Ring would remain, and would continue to corrupt its new bearer and the rest of Middle-earth. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. This is the first video I've made since being back home, and I want to thank everyone who has stuck around. The break has allowed me to avoid burning out, and has given me time to come up with new ideas for new videos. Anyway, cheers, farewell, and remember, don't invest your power into NFTs. You'll end up doing worse than Sauron.